be on fire for God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Yeah. Whoa. I want to be everything you desired. I want to walk with you. How many of you believe that? I want to live with the burning passion. I want to be consumed. Everybody say, I want to be. I want to be everything you desired. I want to walk with you.
live a life of death. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles. I live a life of faith. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of faith. Because I know who I am. Jesus says in Matthew 18, he says, if uh, if two of you shall agree on anything on earth, he says, you shall ask and it says, you sh- it shall be granted you granted to you of my father in heaven. Amen. And sometimes we just need somebody to touch and agree with with us of what it is that we're going through. Amen. Amen. Uh, let, us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, most holy and gracious God, we come before you, Lord. It is you, Lord God, who is rich in mercy, who is rich in grace, O oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, for who you are, O oh God. Father God, we are the creature, O oh God. You are the creator. It is you who has made us and not we ourselves. We humble ourselves, O oh God, as we come boldly before your throne. For your word says that we do we have an advocate, Lord God, who is tempted in every area as we were yet without sin. So we can come boldly before your throne of grace, O oh God, to obtain mercy and grace in our time of need. This is a time of need, O oh God. And we just thank you for who you are. We lift you up and we magnify your name. You are the King of glory. You are the Lord of hosts. And we honor you, Lord God, as such, O oh God, in our lives. And we acknowledge you, Lord God, for who you are, Lord God. Holy, 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 Lord God, are you, O oh Lord. 
We join with the angels as they declare your holiness, Lord God, your perfection, Lord God, your purity, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, you know the needs that are that are in the in the in the sanctuary right now, Lord God. Father God, we lift those needs up to you, Lord God, whether it is healing, Lord God, whether it is a renewing of mind, oh God, whether it is salvation, Lord God the name of Jesus. Where there, where people are bound, Lord God, you are setting free. Where there are chains, Lord God, they are broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you, Father God, that you know our ins and our outs, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that you love us with such a great love, Lord God. Your word says that it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance, oh God. So we thank you for that goodness, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that you would deliver, Lord God, that by your spirit that you would draw souls to Christ. For your word says that no man, Jesus says, no man can come to me except the Father draw him. So we pray that you would draw now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we, we, we lift up our families to you, God. Our mothers and our fathers and our children, Lord God. Our grandparents, Father God, we lift them up to you, Father God. We pray, Father God, that healing would go forth, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father God, that deliver, deliverance would go forth, Lord God. We pray, Father God, for those, who are God, who have lost their way, that you would lead them back, that you would help them to find their way, Father God, back to you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father God, that we would be in unity, Father God, that we would love one another, Lord God, and always be and always forgive. For your word says that if we don't forgive, Lord God, you will not forgive us. Give us the courage to forgive, Lord God, and let things go, Lord God, to give them to you, Lord God. Let us let people off of their debts, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for your provision. Those of us, Lord God, some of us need provision right now, Lord God. Give us this day our daily bread. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Where there there is lack, Lord God, we pray, Father God, for provision, Lord God. We pray for sustenance, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Where people, Father God, are just surviving, we pray, Father God, that they would thrive, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we need you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are all powerful, Lord God, that in the beginning you spoke, Lord God, and things came into existence, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Father God, let us us be aware of, of, of ourselves, oh God. Let us be aware of who we are, Lord God. We know that we are not perfect, oh God. But Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are able to to help us, to sanctify us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, you are able to make us clean, oh God. So we freely confess our sins and our faults, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, knowing that you are able to forgive and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, oh God. Turn our hearts back to you, Lord God. Give us a fire and a passion for you, Lord God. Help our eyes to be stayed on you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the needs that have been presented here at the altar. We thank you, Lord God, for the burdens that have been left here at the altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your burden is light, Lord God. So we take that upon and we exchange ours for yours, Lord God. Right now, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Honor you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Because you deserve the highest praise. You deserve the highest praise, oh God. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. morning church. It is time for our tithes and offerings.
praise God. If you need an offering envelope, if you'll raise your hands, the ushers will be glad to assist you this morning. I'm going to be reading from the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6, beginning at verse 17 through 19. And the word of God says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to go, to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. And the King James Version says eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for the reading of his word. If you have your offering ready, we'll ask everyone to please stand. And let's live our offering up to the Lord. Father God, this morning we thank you for the opportunity to serve you in our giving. We thank God for the opportunity to share and give a part of what you have given us. Father God, we know that the word of God tells us that the tithe is holy and it belongs to you. So we bring our tithe and our offering this morning. We bring our seeds, our first fruits, and all of the offering that you have blessed us with in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, that it is blessed. We thank you, God, we planted into your kingdom for the upbuilding of that kingdom and to doing a ministry and to winning souls in Jesus' name. And we decree and thank you, God, that our households are blessed as we give and share with others in need. We thank you, God, hallelujah, that everything we set our hands to do shall prosper. And we decree that it is blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. The ushers will lead you around. Hallelujah. Georgia. And he 
left home at the age of 17 because he wanted to be a jazz and blues musician. But when he got to Chicago, he had been there for a while. And then he, um, the lady that he married, and she was pregnant at the time, she died and the baby died. And that's when uh, Thomas Dorsey was converted. And that's when he penned his most famous song that everybody knows, Take My Hand, Precious Lord. In the winter of 1932, um, that's what I was just saying, while on the road performing, he penned that song, Take My Hand, Precious Lord doing a morning uh, memorial service for his wife and child. In the next years, Darcy spent most of his time on tour and became a successful black music publisher. Later in life, he married Catherine Mosley, and they had two children. But Thomas Darcy, he, um, he started choirs and his Choir, the choir company is still going today. He wrote music for everybody. He wrote music for Elvis Presley, Pat Boone, Aretha Franklin, the Richard, and it goes on and on and on. Most people call him the father of gospel music because he is the one that started it. He opened the gate to what uh, we call now the golden age of gospel music. The next person is Mahalia Jackson, and I'm sure you all know who she is. She is called the queen of gospel music. And although she was influenced by Ma Rainey and all of the blues people, but she never deterred from singing gospel music. She said she would not sing at nightclubs. She didn't do it. She would not do it. She would not be pressured to do R&B. She would not change. She stood her ground. She was also a very uh, prolific businesswoman. She had a beauty salon. She influenced Dr. Martin Luther King. She got her fame when she sang the song, Moving On Up a Little Higher. And when she did that song, she sold over 2 million copies. And that was the beginning when gospel music really began to take off because no other gospel singer had ever done that before. And then she, she had got her record deal and she had a lot of heroes along the way. She just, she was a lady of great authority, spiritual, and she was very much respected around the world. She inspired, she was mentors to Della Reese. She uh, was, uh, and her and James Cleveland were good friends. And they were also inspired by each other. So that's Mahalia Jackson. The next person is Shirley Caesar. Now you know, everybody knows Shirley Caesar. Her famous song, Hold My Music, one of my favorite ones. And she is called the First Lady of Gospel. She has won uh, 11 Grammy Awards, 15 Dove Awards, and 14 Stella Awards. She has released over 40 albums. She was been in gospel music, musicals, Mama I Want to Sing, Born to Sing, and Mama Free. She was born in Durham, North Carolina, and I don't know if you all know this, she was signed to a record label at 12 years old. And she's been singing for over 17 years. She's joined the Gospel Caravan, Caravan with Albertina Walker, and if you hear the song sweeping through the city with the Gospel Caravan, that's Shirley C. And the last but not least is Mr. James Cleveland. Born in Chicago, Cleveland then began singing as a boy soprano in Pilgrim Baptist Church 
where Thomas A. Dorothy was the minister of music and Roberta Martin was pianist for the choir. So as you can see, all 40 gospel greats, they paved the way for gospel music as we know it now with the way he did his music because he intertwined blues and jazz with the gospel. But we know we're not no stranger to that. Uh, look at Kurt Franklin, what he went through when he got started. So we know how we know about Southern Baptist. But I want you all to remember something about gospel music. Gospel music transcends all over the world, no matter where you are. For all the music that we see this day, from blues to RB, gospel music is represented in that music. So remember something about Black History Month. If you don't remember anything else, Black History is American history. Black history is your history. Black history is my history. Black history is our history. Thank you. Amen. Let praises from from the inside. Move me in you delight from the inside, from the inside of me.
Standing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for the fan. That's okay. Don't stop fan. They need, they need to adjust their heat up in here. If they see people fanning, they should adjust the heat, right? So people be comfortable. I mean, I think people would know to do that. But anyway, so because if I had a fan, I'd be like, whoa. You getting a fan? Sir? I'd be like, right. You can't have your fan, baby. If I can just look like I'm gonna need it. No, I'm joking. You swing. <laughs> I'm having fun, guys. I'd love to have me some fun. I guess that's obvious, right? But sometimes I'm very serious. Even in the fun. Amen. God is good. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. I want to pray while you stand. Can we do that? Heavenly Father, right now we humble ourselves. We bless you. We glorify you. We worship you. We praise you. Thank you, Father God, for being our Father. Thank you for allowing us to know that you're our Father, our God. You're the one that made us, Father God. You're the one that can help us. You're the one that can bring us forth. You're the one that can deliver us. You're the one that can make us whole. Thank you for that, God. We bless your holy name. Even though, God, we sometimes take it for granted that we don't do the things that we should do. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, but most of all, for your forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Oh, Father God, it is time that your word must go forth. Therefore, I will decrease in prayer that you might increase. Let it be all of you, God. None of me. Just use me as your vessel, please, God. If there's anything that is in me that is in conflict with what you want to do, I denounce that, curse that, uproot that, and I yield and submit myself completely to your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, touch every heart that it might be able to hear, receive, and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen and amen. And amen. amen. You know, I was thinking um, I, uh, about this. Obeying God, obedience to God, and I realized something. Uh, uh, man has has not. And when you talk about obedience to God, obedience to God is what we know is right. Amen. What we know is right. What His words say is right. Amen. Um, and I think uh, when when you when you really look at it, there there is no one ever who has completely obeyed God. No one ever. Although everyone wants to, who's a, who's a believer, 
Amen. But only somebody who's who's ever been able to obey God is Jesus. Nobody else. Nobody else has been able to fully obey God. Amen. Nobody. Um, and so sometimes when you look at life and you look at the promises that are in Scripture about obedience to God, it causes you to want to obey God. I mean, like so you put this out here and you're saying I can have success and my life can be a certain way. I want to obey you, God. Like, help me to obey you, God. And, and it's not as complex as we might think. Uh, it was complex at one time when, when, when before Jesus came, of course, there was the law of Moses. And, uh, and, and it, was, it was the commandments of God. But it really served as a, as a schoolmaster to let us know where we were. Amen? Where we were and where we are in life. Uh, but no man could, could, could fulfill that. And so what God did, he looked at that. He had mercy on mankind. He said, I'll do it. I'll do this. I'll I'll send my son who can fulfill it. And so that's what he did. So it's no longer, when you think about obeying God, it's not dealing with the law of Moses anymore. It's not, it's not dealing with the law of Moses anymore. Uh, because because um, uh, the law of Moses, we could not do. But, so I want you to hear that. I want you to hear that because a lot of times you, you'll let people tell you that uh, certain things that you are doing are hindering, uh, is hindering your relationship with God. And it might not be. Because he's already dealt with sin in Christ Jesus. He's already dealt with sin in Christ Jesus, so it, it, it just might not be. But the biggest hindrance or the biggest thing that, that we have to wrestle with now is um, uh, love. His commandment now, see, Christ came and he fulfilled the law. So when I put my confidence in Jesus Christ, the law is fulfilled on my behalf. Somebody knew that. A lot of times you walk around and the little things you do, you still put yourself in bondage. But the Bible said God forgives us for our past, present, future sins. Amen. It's, it's, it's a pre-order. It's already done. It was done in Christ. But it also says when we do something, confess, agree with God that it is wrong, and then watch God's forgiveness manifest in our lives. What, is, what does that mean? But when God's forgiveness manifests in my life, if I've sinned and it causes death, dysfunction where I cannot see life the way God said I should be able to see life, once I confess, I should be able to get my range back. I should be able to get my focus back. I should be able to see it. I should be able to know which way to go and which direction to go in. Amen? So, so you, we have to confess it. I want to give you some things here now. The, the meaning of obedience. According to, to the Marion Webster, it says, obedience definition is the act or instance of obeying. The quality or state of being obedient. The definition of obedient is submissive to the restraint or command of authority. Submissive to the restraint or command of authority. Uh, so the meaning of Christian obedience is the act of submitting, the act of submitting my will to the commands of God. The act of submitting. Now, when you talk about submitting one's will, you're talking about not wrestling in your mind, not wrestling in your emotions, not wrestling in how you're being treated. It's, it's, a, it's a God, you're right. This is the way it should be. I submit, I submit my whole will to that. And what it does is once you submit your will to his right, or to his word, or, 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 or to obedience to him, then what, it ha what happens is you get the power of the Holy Spirit to let you walk out obedience. When you can walk out of obedience, you can experience the success that God has for you. God is not a liar. God said, I give you the ability to get well. It's the saddest thing for a believer to do is live a fantasy. Fantasy is looking at everybody else and then gauging my own life on what I should be doing. I give my child better than they do. I go to church more than they do. I do this more than they do. It don't matter. What matters is can you be obedient? Because God has already put it in the atmosphere that if I'm obedient, then blessings come my way. Anybody hear that? If I'm what? Obedient, what happens? Blessings come my way. Amen? Amen. If I'm obedient to God. You see, that's the way you have a curse. Curse means empowered to fail. Sometimes, you know, curse, when you hear curse, it sounds bad. But no, curse is one of the most manipulated things that happens in people's lives. Um, you know, you, you say, I'm not under that curse. Well, the, the word curse, can I tell you what it means? It means empowered to fail. 
So obedience brings me from underneath the empowerment to fail. It puts me in a place of empowerment to succeed. Amen. Uh, so let's look at a few scriptures. And, and, uh, and let me give you this again. Uh, Christian obedience is the act of submitting, obeying to the commandments of God. The highest authority, creator, and father of all mankind. Amen. So if I have faith in God, I believe I'm a Christian. I have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. Obedience is manifested by me yielding to the Holy Spirit. Yielding to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yielding to the Holy Spirit. I want to look at a couple of scriptures here. I want you to go to John chapter 14, verse 15. John chapter 14. Let me, let me say this to you. Um, if you can obey, you can see the blessings of God. Anybody hear that? If you can obey, you can see the what? The blessing. Now, blessed is the opposite of curse. The word blessed is empowered to succeed. The word cursed is empowered to fail. A lot of people can't notice when they're empowered to fail. They make a lot of excuses like, well, it just happened to, happened to my mom, it happened to my dad. It shouldn't have. It shouldn't have happened. But, but a curse can move in through an act of disobedience. It can remain for generations. An act of disobedience. I, I, this is the act of of disobedience that's not repented of or not confessed. An act of disobedience that's not confessed, that's not acknowledged. Anybody hear that? See, if a person go out and they do something and it's against the word of God and then the Bible says that this is what's going to happen if you do that. Once they do it, hear this, and they don't confess it, no matter how many times they go to church afterwards, no matter how, how many times they pray, if they don't confess it and acknowledge it before God, it releases something in the atmosphere for that family and that bloodline. And what they'll do is they'll walk around as though, I don't know what's going on. They don't because in the curse, you're blinded. I don't know why my child act like that. I don't know why these folks act like this. I don't, you, I, of course you don't. But it's affecting you so hard because there's something you've got to go to God and talk about. Anybody listening? So over in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Amen. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Amen. I want to go over into over into Acts chapter chapter five, verse twenty nine. Chapter five, Acts, A C T S, chapter five, twenty nine. Watch this one. I like this one. Acts, A C T S, chapter five, verse twenty nine. Amen. Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to what? Obey God rather than me. Yes, elder. That's tedious. Sometimes you can get yourself in a predicament where the spirit of God is ministering to you and saying to you, go ahead and do that. I want you to help that person. But somebody on this side said to you, don't. That ain't no good. Don't, don't do that. They ain't going to tell you. They ain't going to pay you back. I'm telling you right now, they ain't going to pay you back. They ain't going to do nothing for you. And then when you give it to them, they ain't going to appreciate it. Don't do it. Hmm? What? The Lord told you to do it. Peter said, it's better, and you got to get this, it's better to obey God than man. They were telling Peter and them to shut up our preaching. But he said, no, we can't do that. See, see, this is the thought, brothers and sisters. You've got to hear this. If I can obey God, he said, he said to me, to give. what is the promise behind that? It shall be given unto me. How? Good man. Press down, shake down the window. He goes on, he says this. Whatever you make happen in other people's lives, God will make happen in your life. Anybody listening? So if you're in a place and you're coming out of a situation, when you, when you don't really understand why your life is like it is, but you're coming out and you're coming out. There are different steps that God will have you take in order to come out. If you stand there and you hold on to your money because it's a me against the world and you can't do what God is saying do, you can't get out. And it's not that God is punishing you. It's the principle has to be worked. See, God sent his word to save us, deliver us, set us free so you can't go to God and say, well, hey, God, I read your word, but I just didn't feel like I had the money. He wouldn't have told you to do it if you didn't have the money. What it was was you didn't have enough money left over, so you need to do what he said to 
You didn't understand that if I do this, I'm opening up a whole new avenue in my life where money can flow through. So what you had wasn't enough in the first place. God will always ask you to do stuff that don't make sense to you initially. Once it start, once you start doing it and you see it working, you'll continue to do it. But the saddest thing about the believer is there's some things they won't, they won't do. Like you'll say, forgive somebody. And somebody will come up and say to you, I tried that. They don't, they don't appreciate you forgiving them. They don't even accept it. That's not your business. Your business is to hear what God said. He said, well, if you forgive folk, I'm going to forgive you. That was after some promises Christ had made. Christ was saying, speak to the rock, speak to the mountain, tell it to be removed, it be removed. He said, when you pray, believe, and it'll, it'll happen to you. So that was after the promises. So he said, if you don't forgive, I don't forgive you. In other words, you break the covenant that we got, and the promises won't work in your life. And this is the, this is the frightening part of the elders, when folks so close to you. You think it's all right not to forgive them. You ever have anybody got somebody? <laughs> Listen, I'm just going to ask you, don't raise your hand on this now, because folks will look at you all, they'll look at you this week and next week. Do anybody have anybody that you're close to and you think it's okay not to forgive them? I mean, you just are mean to them. Every time you get you snap, crackle, and pop on them, say something nasty and obnoxious and hateful. Anybody like that in here, don't raise your hand. Don't do it. I know you're in here because God wouldn't call you out like that if you weren't in here. He know you're in there, but I just, I'm just trying to help you. I'm just at work. I'm working. I told my wife, just second, I said, baby, I'm going to go to work. She's going to work, baby. I'm working. Uh, I am working, guys. That was, that was, that was a, but anyway. So, so here it is. If he's got a word for you and you receive it, obedience, get this now. Obedience is not by your power or your will. It's by submissiveness. Get that. If I can't forgive, he said forgive, I got a face like, God, I'm snap, crackling, and popping on this person. And when they say something to me, God, they make me mad just hearing their voice. Trying to handle me. That's when you got to go to God and say, God, I'm wrong. This is not of you. Confess it. I know I'm wrong, God, because your word said for me to forgive. Somebody, this will bless you. It'll change your life. It'll change all the dynamics of your household, if you can hear this. Sometimes you're supposed to love folk, but in actuality, something they did to you years ago, you're not even facing the fact that you hate them. See, the hate was never removed, so you're trying to love them over hate. So you feel some kind of way. Every time they say something, you feel some kind of way. And then you, I'm going to tell you, when a child hates their parents, they talk back to them nasty. Like when you when you when you, if you're talking to your mama, you, your mama trying to talk, you got grown and you say anything to her. You should never do that. You should honor your mother and your father. You should hush your mouth. Like if they talking to you, you need to humble yourself. When I got that word with, around my grandmother, it was like, mm-mm, no, no, I ain't playing with you, hot partner. When you say something, I'm gonna be quiet and shut my mouth. I'm gonna get these blessings right. Hear me? I had to learn. Those that were in authority in my life, I had to learn. Like, you know, I had I went, I went always sweet. I was a crack, crack, snap, crackling. I was snap, snap, and then crackling and pop. <laughs> I did. Then not sister Lisa. Don't say nothing, Spirit. Don't tell folks that. But God had mercy on me. He had mercy. See, this is the thing. Obeying God is the most powerful thing you can do. It breaks generational curses for four, five, six generations. It lift folk up out of stuff. This is the key to obeying God. You can't take for granted what you say. You, you might not understand that if you if you got parents, I don't have I don't have a mother nor a father in the earth. Uh, but if you got parents, I don't have grandparents in the earth. At least we don't either. Neither one of us do. But if, if you got parents in the earth, listen to me. He said. Honor thy father and thy mother. Why? So that your days are going. What do you mean days? He's talking about good days. If you have a conflict, listen, somebody, this is God is talking to somebody in your name. If you've got a conflict where you got to be so nasty with your mama, you got to be so strong with your mama, you got to be so strong with your daddy, you don't need to talk to them. You need to get as far from them as the east is from the west. Hear me. 
Why? Because they are, see, God honors his own word. He didn't say they were perfect. He asking you to be his child and let him work through you to draw them closer to him. Wisdom. He's giving you something so that your life can pr- see to obey God causes my life. Like, that, that we all get stuck in places. We get stuck in places. We get stuck in places of something. But you have to overcome it. Jesus said, I've overcome the world. He gave that to us. You have to overcome it. Amen? I want to go over to 1 Peter 1 and, 1 and 14. 1 Peter 1 and 14. I want you, I want you to see this. What, 1 Peter 1 14. I want you to see this. Then Peter and the other apostles answered. No, that wasn't the right one. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance. Listen, listen, look at this now. See, see, when we're obedient to God, we don't keep conforming ourselves to the passions of the world. Sometimes when you're walking with God, you can have what's called uh, waiting room moments. Waiting room moments seem like ain't nothing going on. Look like God didn't forgot about you. And sometimes God can leave you in the waiting room a long time. You'll be like, what happened, God? Why you, you ain't, he hasn't forgotten about you. He doesn't forget about us. But sometimes when we're, when we're, when we're, and so, so the challenge is, is, um, don't conform to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So while I'm in a waiting room, I need to be doing what? Renewing my mind with the word of God. Because sometimes we are locked in a waiting place because the way we think is not conducive to what we're asking for. The thinking has to change in order for me to get in a certain place. So so if if I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not renewing my mind with the word of God, I'm going to keep conforming. Right, my mind got to do something. It's got to go backwards or forward. It's got to, it can't stay still. The mind thinks when you don't want it to think. Sometimes I say, mind shut up. Mind go to sleep. Mind be quiet. But it doesn't. It thinks when you, so, so if you're not putting anything in there for it to think on, it's going to find stuff. It's going to roam the room. It's going to roam your past. It's going to roam the people you don't like. It's going to find something to think about. That's why you get a lot of believers. They make no progress or they make little progress. What I'm dealing with is not your heaven boundness. You're going to heaven if you say. What we're dealing with is obeying God so you can have a life that's worth living on the earth. Amen. I want to go to 1 John 5 and 3. Five and three. First John, five and three. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. For his commandments are not burdensome. Amen? They're not burdensome. And, all, and when you keep reading these, go in in your scriptures and you read, you'll find some promises. Amen? Amen. Go to Isaiah chapter one, verse 19. Isaiah chapter one, verse 19. Isaiah chapter one, verse 19. If you're willing and obedient, Watch this. You shall eat the good of the land. Some people have never tasted the good of the land. They haven't. They haven't. They they, they, they tasted something. And they called it good. But it's not what God's talking about. God has a good that's better than your good. God has a life that's better than your life. I've seen many times where I thought what I was looking for was what I wanted. But what God actually gave me was better than what I was looking for. I thought what I was looking for, listen to this, would be good for me, would be good to me. I would appreciate it. But it wasn't true. See, when you when you take pleasure in the Lord, He gives you the desires of your heart. 
The challenge with that is we don't know what our desires are. We think we do, but we're disconnected. See, the only way we can get back to our heart and really understand it is God's got to take us there. That's why you have people, they, they fumble through life. They, they, I want this now, and I want that now, and it never satisfies. It never, I mean, it's just never satisfied. You know why? Because they can't give themselves the desires. They don't, we don't know them. See, God created that heart. That's that inner being, that inner person. That's the part that belongs. So those desires come, are coming from him, not us. So when I'm connected to God and I, and I, and I begin to take this pleasure in him, he gives me what? The desires of my heart. It brings satisfaction. It brings satisfaction. It is the good of the land. It is the blessed of the land. It's the blessed of the land. It's the good of the land. It's, it's what I can't imagine. Do you know you can look at people and they're living large and you'd be like, I don't know how they're doing that, but I bet they ain't doing it right. You know why you think like that? Because you don't believe you can live large. I do. I live large. <laughs> I do. But I, I do it because he got me there. See, I don't know people would look out and say, that ain't right right now. Because I didn't understand. See, see, if you ain't never tasted it, you've never walked into it, it's foreign to you. You can't, it's hard for you to believe someone is serving God, got a right relationship, studying his word, obeying his word, and the wisdom that he gives you to walk and do certain things. It's hard for you to believe that a person can live the way that people live. The, the hustlers are obeying their God. They're hustling hard out there to get that money. If you could if you can obey your God, he'll make it easy. God is a God of Eden. He's a God of Eden. God, God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He didn't want it to be hard for them. When you get real with God, life come to you for real. Seek you first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and these things shall be added unto you. They'll do it. They'll come. They'll come. But what comes is this mind, this energy, this purpose, quick, it's instantly, it comes. God can give you one idea that can change your life forever. One. One idea. How many? One. This how one word from God. Listen, but you gotta open. I'm, I'm gonna get you something. Now I'm gonna be done. Gotta obey. Now I'm not talking about the law of Moses. I'm talking about what Christ gave us. I'm going to show it to you. Amen. Go to Luke chapter six, verse forty-six. Real quick. I got to prove what I got to do. Luke chapter, Luke chapter six, verse forty-six. Watch this now. Get this. This, this makes sense to you. Luke chapter six, verse. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Why says? Why call him Lord? Why call him Lord? Why call yourself a Christian and not do what I tell you? Not. That's a rainbow word. Rainbow for God speaks. Logos is written. But the rhema word is where God speaks. God speaks in the midst of his revelation, of, 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 in the midst of his um, in the midst of his logos. Rhema comes, God gives you wisdom. Anybody hear it? God gives you wisdom. So, so he'll, he'll tell you something. He'll give you an idea. He'll give you hope. He'll, and what he does is in the rhema, time with God, prayer with God, he gives you instructions. He gives you energy. He gives you favor. He gives you timing. And it works. He said, why call me Lord? Lord, don't do what I say. Don't get caught up with Moses' law. That's not what he's talking about. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Let me, let me do it for a moment. I'm going to tell you exactly what he said. Let's go to Exodus 23, 22. Exodus 23, 22. Exodus. 23, 23, 23, 22. Chapter 23, verse 22. But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies. Adversary to your adversaries. I'll fight your battles. There are some things that you don't even have to worry about. You're going to get off. Let me tell you something. When you start walking and your life begin to really be, you get to flourish, you have all kinds of folks that hate you. You have folks that wish you bad and horrible. God will handle them. He won't let you know how he handled them. It ain't your business. You don't want to pray God handle them. You want to say God save them. God deliver them. God make them free. God get them out of my path. <laughs> God can handle them. If you, you sit back and you just, I can't stand something, so I know they ain't for me. So, he said, I will put 
your enemies at your table. He said, because I'm going to bless you in the presence of your enemies. Can't give it all your enemies. You don't have no need for no blessings. I'm talking about the people that's a part of your family that's in your household and all that. Like, Can't give it all them. <laughs> you know, yeah, some people consider folk they some people consider people they married to their enemies. The Bible says your work is of those of your own household. You know why? They know how to get to you. They do. They study you. We study each other. It's not even common. It's just common ground. It's just the way we are. He said, I'll be a, he said, I'll be an enemy. I mean, I'll be I'll be an enemy, your enemy, I'll be an adversary. He said, I'll fight your battle. I'll give you victory. He said, they can't, they can't overtake me. I want to go to Psalms 119, verse 30. I'm going to get you what I, want, what I want to do. Psalms chapter 119, verse 30. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. Get this. I set your rules before me. I set your rules before me. I've chosen the way of faithfulness. Look at, look at this now. See, God, when you're faithful to me, then you can see my blessings. You can see me move. You can see me. You can experience me. When you're faithful, I've chosen the way of faithfulness. Get this. So a lot of people don't understand how important it is to stay faithful to God. Not on your terms. I remember when I was uh, sinning saved, like deep sinning saved, saved, let me save and sinning. Well, I mean deep sinning. I mean really more sin than saved. So I wanted to do it like I wanted to do it. I wanted to, you know, go to church when I get ready. Do other things when I got ready. Just do it the way I want to do it. It made no sense. I couldn't do nothing. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. You see, you can't serve two masters. So, so if you if you're gonna do it God's way, you need to be faithful. It didn't make no sense for me to go to church just every Sunday, you know. <laughs> but until I got and understood that He rewards faithfulness and He put it in my spirit, I couldn't make any progress. Nothing was happening. Everything was just so chaotic and I was so bad. And I was like, God, why am I living like this? I go to church. When you get ready. See, see, when he when he when, when he puts in place for work for your life, but you got to do it. You can't be no in and up out of here. You, you need to be here every time the door is open. If you want to change in your life, if you want to change in your life, you got to be faithful. You got to be committed. You got to be submitted to it. You can't you can't do it the way you want to do it. I learned that when I learned that. When it, this is how I learned it. I was going through so much. I was like, God, why in the world is that I'm going through all of this and I can't even do the things that are necessary just to basically live? What's going on with me, God? What is happening? What have I done against you? Like, I, needed, I knew he could do it because he was doing it for other people. Other people were living good. And I said, God, what, what's wrong with me? What is it? He said, you hate me. I didn't know I hated him. Sometimes you can hate. See, it ain't say you hate him. It's how you act toward him. He said, I love you. He said, but this is what you got to do. He gave me exact instructions. He said, I'm going to send you somewhere. I want you to go in there. I want you to sit down. I want you to be quiet. And I'm going to bring you forward. He said, doors open. You be there. And he brought me forward. <laughs> but I had to say this to him. I said, God, now, you know, I've tried a couple times to do that. And I hadn't had a whole lot of success because my mind kept getting in my way. I said, Jesus, will you please help me? And he helped me. Anybody listening? But I do, this is, this is John chapter 14, verse 31. I got I to gotta go further. I'm going to be down here in a second. John chapter 14, verse 31. But I do as the Father has commanded me. This is Jesus. So that the world may know that I love the Father. So when you love God, you do what he say do. When you love God, you do what he say do. Let me show you what he wants you to do. Now, remember I told you we're not under the Moses law. There are two, two obedience for the Christians, but three really, that are really critical. Three. For the, the first one is, 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 is that we look at Matthew chapter chapter 2, verse 2. Chapter 2, verse 2, I want you to see this. The first two forms of Christian obedience given are from Jesus Christ. They're from Jesus. Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, I want you to get this. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? He said to him, here it is, ready? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That's obedience. Now, it's not just your words, though. It's your action. This is the great and first commandment. And the second one is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these commandments depend all the law and all the prophets. 
He didn't say you got to go and do every little thing you can. You don't even know the whole law. So, so love the Lord your God. It's necessary. It's obedience can be simply honor and praising God as he say do it. Everybody is different and you need to do it different. You need to do it the way that it works. Remember, one, one thing about lifting up my hands and praising God, it blesses me. Like I, when, I, when I pray, when I really praise God, it blesses, it changes me. It's like God washed me all over again. And so so you gotta you gotta be willing to praise God. You gotta you gotta be willing to spend the time with him, but you gotta learn how it affects you. Like you don't need to do it just because you can lift up your hand. No, no, it needs to affect you. It might not, you might not be you lifting up your hand. It might be you sitting down and just saying, Thank you, Jesus. However, it needs to affect you though. It needs to you can't you can't copy nobody else. It needs to be a relationship with God. Loving God is a relationship with God of honor and respect. The next one says, love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't love yourself, you can't love no neighbor. Because he didn't say love your neighbor more than yourself. He said love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. Amen. Amen. So obedience is, is he, gave, he gave two things. He said love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul. That's the first one. He said then love your neighbor as yourself. Out of all that I get, I need to get this. And he said, God, help me with this. I want this. God, help me with this. You need to say the same thing. In loving your neighbor, your neighbor can, and I always start with those of your own household. The, the key word to loving is forgiveness. The key word to loving is what? Forgiveness. You have to have, you have to ask the Holy Spirit to put a forgiveness in you that operates before somebody sins against you. Amen. You have to. If you can get the forgiveness, you can have a good time. You can enjoy life. If you can, like people do crazy stuff. Man. They people say crazy stuff to me some, sometimes, and they they they're smarter than you are. They're sharp. They look at you like yo, I can do this for you. And I be want to say, get yo. I don't cuss, but I be want to cuss. I do. I, I, I be like, get the, what the, really, why? But. I forgive them in advance so I can talk. I can keep talking to them like they got some sense. That's forgive. See, when you really forgive somebody in advance, what they do is not going to affect you to get you out of that love zone. Now you might, you might, it's might, you might get a little upset sometimes, but you'll come right back. It'll, it'll, like the Holy Spirit will snatch you back. You ain't got time to sit there and just meditate on what they did. With me now, I will read mail. Like I will. Like if you're close enough to me and God has got me in your life and you gotta go somewhere, I will sit with you and have some words that you might not appreciate. But it's designed to get you where you're supposed to go. It's not out of hurt or bitterness. It's just, you know, you don't need to this what's hurting you. That's why you still stuck, you know. I go all in. Now the last thing is prayer. The last thing is um, and so so what, what we're doing, we're saying, obey God, we need to love God with all the heart and mind. So we need to love our neighbors ourselves. But we need to have communion with God to effectively love God. Hear me, because see, Jesus said we couldn't do the other stuff. And so we couldn't, we, we really couldn't. I mean, you can get some right, some wrong. Stop and stop judging people. I can't believe they did that. Believe it, they did it. Like, but <laughs> any human being can have a moment of insanity. Do stuff that ain't 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 rational. Any human being can be riding down the street, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. If somebody get in front of them, they shoot them straight up bird. No hesitation. Anybody do that? Don't raise your hand in here. I told you. Church folk are judge. They can though. They don't. I mean, I've experienced, I've been riding with people there do it. I'd be like, no, you didn't. I didn't say me, right? <laughs> I'm talking about me. I've had moments where I'd be like, I get I've been in the car, I'd be saying some stuff. Like, you need to get that. Get on with me. Then what I do is I'll say, God, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for letting them go slow because that might be saving me from there. This not that come to my senses. It don't, see, see, obeying God doesn't mean you ain't going to do something. It's just when you do something, you confess like, God, I was so wrong. I was behind this old lady. I'm done. This is it. I was behind this little old lady. And she was driving so slow. So, I mean, the lady was driving so slow. And I said, you need to get out. Get out. I didn't know it was old lady. I was saying all kinds of stuff. I can't tell you everything I said because that God has forgiven me. And so I, I got got up to I got up to the lady. <laughs> anyway, 
It's my mother-in-law in my door. Wait, wait, wait. It's my, it my wife's mother. Now, that was my girl, right? I did just like this. I, and went past real, real quick. Because, see, my mother-in-law had minimum sight, so she couldn't see me. But my little daughter could have seen me, but she was trying to help her grandma with dry eye. I, so I felt so bad. When I went over there, I gave her the great biggest hug. I said, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to see you. I said, I saw y'all earlier. She said, yeah, somebody was just blowing that thing. Bro. I said, what? I said, what? I love my mother. Like my mother-in-law went through some man went through some stuff for me. Trust me, she and my father-in-law. I went man. Woo! When when I got in the family, I was not well done. <laughs> I I had to, I had to be out some more cooking, man, and they had to love me through some math. <laughs> I'm telling you, but that hurt my feelings. You have to be careful. You have to be careful how you blow blow behind people. And you know what the tragedy ever was? She was in our car. I, I didn't even recognize our car. We had this little great dynasty, and, and she had gotten the car from my wife, and I didn't know she was in the car. I knew my wife was at work. How was I just supposed to know she was in the car? You should have seen me kissing up, man. Kissed up about a whole week. Amen. If the key to it, brothers and sisters, in the real being God, you're going to miss it sometimes. You're going to drop the wall sometimes. But the key to it is as quick as you can. Lord, I'm wrong. I missed you. The way I feel about that. I, miss, I don't want to feel that way about that person. I don't want to have that kind of interaction with them anymore. God, I just really want you to help me. That's why your blessing is. But you cannot do that without Christ Jesus. You have to have Jesus there. And so the Bible says this, that, that in order to have a relationship with God, even Jesus says, you cannot come to the Father except but by me. And the only way you can come to, the, to me is the Father God to draw you. I'm praying that God will draw you now in the name of Jesus. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and you need him, you want him, ask God to come into your life. Ask Christ to come into your life. And be your Lord and be your Savior. Ask him. Say, God, you know, forgive me for my sins. Jesus, please come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I need you. Then when you ask him, believe he's come in by the Spirit. And then once you believe, confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ, you are the Lord of my life. Father, I do believe that you raised him from the dead. I thank you for saving my soul today. I thank you. The Bible said once you do that, you're saved. You're in a unique place, brothers and sisters. But the thing that Jesus also required, he said once they believe in me, they need to be baptized. You need to be baptized. You need a place where you can congregate. You can be faithful. You can be committed. You can grow and you can develop. All of that's afforded to you here. If you if you want to be baptized, when you come up front, I think one of the ministers is going to call you up front if you're a visitor, and then let them know, say, I need to be baptized because I've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. If you if you need to have a church home, you can come right now, and I'll receive you into the into the church in Hampton. In the name of Jesus, into the church in Hampton. You, if you're believing that this is what God will have you be. If you come forward, I will receive you. In the, in the Amen. 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 Listen, if you don't do it here, you can do it online. You can do it online. Listen, I love you. I thank God for you. This is what I'm for that. I'm expecting for you to have a great week. I'm expecting for you to be blessed. I'm expecting for every generation of curse to be broken. I'm expecting for you to see miracles in your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>